Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and it's a classic movie that I grew up with back in the 90s that surprisingly enough celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2014. It's called The Sandlot, and this is of course the 20th anniversary Blu-ray and DVD edition of the film. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any new features other than the same features that's on the DVD, which is also on the Blu-ray as well. But it does have uh, a very good high-definition transfer for this film. It looks even better than the original DVD. And it has a slipcover like this, which feels very soft and very embossed the way this was created. And once you take out the slip cover, you get a new cover art of the of the Sandlot kids, including the dog, <laughs> known as the Beast, aka Hercules. Yeah, you can see the back right here too. Also on this set, it also includes uh, the collectible cards, which I have right here. Yep, and there's like tons of them right here of the, the Sandlot cast. Yeah, there's Timmy, there's Yeah Yeah, okay. there's Squints, Tommy, Benny. Smalls, <laughs> The Beast, Kenny, Ham, and Beatrim. <laughs> yep, that's the cast. And that's a great set for a set of corruptible cards that they had. I still have the original DVD of the film with the original cover art. Right there. <laughs> yes. This was the DVD I own for years now. But I always love this cover art. They also had this on the original Blu-ray as well. So, so there's a difference. And you can see the back with the dog, of course, and the kid. And the quote from uh, Cisco and Ebert, two thumbs up. Yeah, they gave it two thumbs up. That was a good Anyway, it's such a classic film. I would watch this over and over. It stars Tom Gary, who went on to do that later film called Lassie, the 1994 adaptation of a classic TV series. And Mike Biatar, who went on to do the, the Mighty Ducks sequels, D2 and D3. Patrick Renna, you know, had to be the best, one of the best roles that he ever taken. Of course, went on to do other films and TV shows. He he appeared in a Salute Your Shorts episode and and winds up in a Pauly Shore movie called Son-in-Law that same year. Along with Chauncey Leperty, Marty York, Brendan Quinn and Adams, Grant Gilt, Shane Antovinsky, Victor Demand. Yeah. with Dennis Larry, Karen Allen, James Earl Jones, and Marley Shelton, who went on to do other movies such as Sin City, you know, Grindhouse, and Scream 4. And she was very beautiful as Wendy Peppercorn. And it's written and directed by David Mickey Evans, who went on to wrote a solid screenplay, which would later become a movie in, back in 1992 called Radio Flyer which stars Elijah Wood and Joseph Mazzello. The movie began set in 1962 when a new kid in town named Scotty Smalls played by Tom Gary has moved to a new neighborhood with his mother and stepfather Bill both played by Karen Allen and Dennis Leary and soon he wanted to learn how to play baseball that is until he met the neighborhood baseball guru, 
Benjamin Rodriguez, played by Mike Biotar. So the very following day, he decided to play baseball at a local sandlot, which not only the Benjamin Rodriguez was there, but also a couple of his buddies that came along. They didn't get along with him at first because he had trouble throwing the ball and catching it as well. So they started laughing at him. The very next day, after practicing his catch with his stepfather, leading him to a black guy, Benjamin came along and decided to have Scotty to join back in the sandlot once again so to see if maybe he can practice more and be able to hang out with the guys until he finally got it right. Things were going pretty well for Scotty Smalls as he finally got to make friends with them. And soon they went on to follow their adventures by not only playing baseball, but also going to a carnival, competing with the baseball team, going to a local pool featuring the desirable, beautiful and very sexy lifeguard who squints just cut his eyes off of. Yeah, since he started falling in love with her, and so on. But soon they also discovered that next to the sandlot is a big, huge junkyard dog named Hercules, aka the Beast. And since then, they started losing all the baseballs that they once played, since the dog started collecting them all and catching them which leads to even bigger trouble when Scotty decided to steal Bill's baseball that was at his trophy room that was actually signed by Babe Roof. Their plan was they had to find, find a lot of activities to, to build in order to get the baseball back before it's too late. Which leads to a lot of epic failures and risking their lives in a near-death experience in order to get it back. And as years follow, Benjamin Rodriguez will soon become the biggest baseball legend of all time. So that's what the movie was all about. And it was a very good film. Having to see it 20 years later, it was still as funny, hilarious, and as good as I remembered it. Because I never forget how funny this movie really is, especially all the lines that they had in the movie. That Ham Porter, you know, Patrick Renner, who played him, said the line, uh, You play ball like a girl! <laughs> and the kid said, What did you say? You heard me. <laughs> as well as the line, You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, Patrick Renner really did stole the show for me, too of his character because I know he went on to do a lot of stuff it, it was really fun and then there were other funny lines too in the movie that you just never get tired of <laughs> I remember seeing this when I was like seven years old almost turning eight at the time it came out in April of that year and I remember laughing very loud but it was so exciting because I mean, all the characters were very memorable. It had a lot of memorable scenes in this film. Especially the scene at the carnival when they were chewing tobacco. And they wound up in the big reel until they started throwing up. Uh, after spinning around and around. And a lot of dizziness. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then there were so many others. Including the... Um, the story that Squints was talking about, about the beast. And there was actually rumor that they actually killed one kid who was actually there, you know, trying to get the ball and everything. Yeah. It's such a funny movie. A lot of people actually compare this film to Stand By Me, which is very similar because considering that it had a narration and it was focusing on the kids themselves. But the difference between that film and The Sandlot is that they just want to go around to look for a dead body. This one is just a movie about baseball and, and trying to risk their lives on getting the baseball from that junkyard dog. 
So yes, there's a difference. And of course they're both set in different times. So yeah. But it's such a classic film. I really enjoyed it. And I still enjoyed it after 20 years. They did make a sequel to this, which is also from the same writer and director. And it's basically a carbon copy of the first movie. End of story. But it did have the actor from Bad Santa, though. The, you know, the fat kid, who was played by uh, Brett Kelly. Unfortunately, he was playing the Patrick Renner role. And not a very good one at that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was terrible. I didn't like that sequel. Even James Earl Jones himself couldn't save the film. But it was it was a nice change of pace for him to make a cameo. But it didn't work. And the whole thing just was ridiculous. And they even added a girl in the movie too. Yeah, go figure. Uh, yeah, they even made a third sequel as well. Not that good either. All I have to say is, the original would always be the best. End of story. In fact, they later had a 20th anniversary reunion uh, with the original cast on, on many news reports just recently. And the sad part is, after seeing some of them on YouTube, I almost wish they had put them as extras on the Blu-ray. So I was a bit disappointed that they didn't do that. Prior to the slipcover and the collectible cards, you know, they could have done a whole lot better than this. Instead, they just recycled the uh, original Blu-ray release from 2011 and the old DVD from 2001. Yeah, that's all they have. Oh well. I guess the only feature you had to look for where you can find the original cast was you had to buy The Sandlot 2 in order to see that. Which is kind of ridiculous because they should have put that on the Blu-ray of The Sandlot. In my opinion. Because it would have been cool. But anyway, it's it's a classic baseball film. But of course, it's not just about baseball in general. Uh, it's basically a movie about friendship and having to look for each other, be able to have fun no matter what happens, and always try to risk your lives. And also, we live the cherished childhood memories until sooner or later you end up growing up and be able to relive your dreams over again. But I definitely say, if you haven't seen The Sandlot, definitely need to check this movie out. You're going to have a good time watching it. And you probably will live those times, too. So anyway, I get The Sandlot 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.